Ho, 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 everybody! Welcome to the Jaded Stitches Show! After we did our candy corn decorative pillow in October, we had a lot of requests to make another holiday-themed decorative pillow. So with that in mind, I've designed us a Santa Claus pillow! <laughs> we're going to use the same triangular shape, and we're going to make the jolliest old elf on the planet today. So, with that in mind, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, and head to the craft table in our magical sleigh and make ourselves a Santa pillow. <laughs> Whee! In order to make our Santa pillow, we're going to use worsted weight acrylic yarn today in five colors. So you want a nice bright cheery red for his hat and his jacket, a little bit of white if you're going to make his pom-pom and also for the edge of his hat, black for his belt, a little yellow for his belt buckle, and some flesh tone. You're going to want a white pom-pom. I've made myself a pom-pom, a nice big white fluffy one for the top of the uh, hat of the pillow. You're going to want a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, a pair of buttons, black ones for his eyes. Mine are 15 millimeter in diameter, so they're nice sized buttons. You know, about the size of my thumbnail there. You're going to want a needle and thread to sew them on, some stuffing, obviously, and our hook. Today, I'm using a five millimeter hook or an H8. That is so we can get a nice sized stitch without it being too gappy. And once you've got all of that assembled, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Then we're going to chain five. We're going to use the half double crochet stitch today, and the uh, last chain that we made is going to be our turning chain. So instead of using two for turning chains in this pattern, we're only going to use one. So remember that there's only one turning chain. With that in mind, you skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one. You're going to work two half double crochet into that chain. So you wrap once, pick up a loop in that second chain. That should give you three loops on your hook. Wrap again, pull back through everything. That's a half double crochet. Work one more half double crochet into the same chain. And now work one half double crochet into each of the next two chains. And two half double crochet in the last chain. And this is what's considered a standard increasing row. So at the end of row one, you will have six stitches all the way across. At the end of every row, we're going to chain one and turn our work. So we're only using one turning chain in this pattern because we want our edges to be nice and tight. And all work begins in the first stitch of each row. So skip your turning chain and make sure that you only work the first stitch. And that's the thing that sits right on top of the stitch from the previous row. Rows two through four are standard increasing rows. So you're going to half double crochet twice into the first stitch. Half double crochet all the way across until you get to the last stitch. So half double crochet in all the middle stitches. When you get to that last stitch, it is going to look a little funny, so it probably looks like it's being pulled down into that first row or the last row. That's because we're only using a single turning chain, so don't forget to use that last stitch. When you get to your last stitch, work two half double crochet into it. And don't worry, it'll pull it up. There we go. And that's the end of row two. You will have six, I should say eight stitches all the way across. So we've gone from six in row one to eight in row two. Chain one for a turning chain, turn your work, and rows three and four are a repeat of row two. So increase in the first and last stitches of each row, work only a single half double crochet in the middle stitches, 
and don't forget to chain one and turn at the end of each row. At the end of row four, you will have 12 stitches. And that completes the uh, consistent increasing row part of this pattern. So from here on out, we're going to alternate rows between an increase row and just a standard half double crochet row. So row five is just a regular straight half double crochet row. You chain one, turn your work, and you're going to work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. You will not change your stitch count. So at the end of row four, you had 12 stitches. At the end of row five, you will still have 12 stitches. At the end of row five, you will still have 12 stitches. <laughs> You're going to chain one, turn your work, and for the next four rows, so rows six through nine, six, seven, eight, and nine, you're going to work the increase row, regular half double crochet row. Increase row, regular half double crochet row. So we begin with an increase row. Increase rows have two half double crochet in the first and last stitches only. And everything in between is just a regular half double crochet. So row six is an increase row, seven is just straight half double crochet, row eight is an increase row, and nine is just straight half double crochet. I'll see you at the end of row nine. Here we are at the end of row nine. You should have 16 stitches in total, and now we're going to change colors. So we're going to snip our yarn. Fasten off. And you're going to flip your work and grab your white. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Pick up your little triangle here. And in that first stitch, you're going to join your new color, your white, with a slip stitch. And if you want to work over your short tails, you're more than welcome to, I do, or you can just leave them all out until the end when you can weave them in. We're going to chain one. Remember, we need to chain one because we didn't chain one at the end of this last row because we fastened off. So you need to chain one. That still works as a turning chain. Gives you your little bit of stretch you need to start your row. We're going to half double crochet twice into this row because this is an increase row. So two half double crochet into the first stitch. Good. You're going to half double crochet into each stitch all the way across to the last one and you're going to half double crochet twice into that. So this is an increase row. We're at the end of row 10. You should have 18 stitches in total. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way back. So this is just a straight half double crochet row. No more increasing. And you're going to fasten off at the end of this row. So we only want two rows of white. The end of row 11, you should still have 18 stitches. Make sure you fasten off. Now we're going to pick up our flesh tone. Put a slip knot on your hook, join your new color in that last stitch of the previous row, join with a slip stitch, chain one, and this is an increase row. So we're going to half double crochet twice into the first and last stitches. At the end of this row, you will have 20 stitches. At the end of row 12, you will have 20 stitches. We're going to chain one, turn our work. Row 13 is just straight half double crochet. The end of row 13, you will still have 20 stitches. We're going to do one more row of the flesh tone. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and this is an increase row. So work two half double crochet in the first and last stitch. At the end of row 14, you should have 22 stitches. That's the end of the flesh tone. So we'll snip our yarn, fasten off. And now we're gonna change back to red. So you can grab your red yarn again, 
make a slip knot, join it in the top of the last stitch of your previous row. And remember, the previous row was an increase row. So we're going to chain one, but we're only going to work half double crochet in each stitch across for this row, and you should still have 22 stitches when you're done. So at the end of row 15, you should still have 22 stitches. And now we're going to go back to our alternating pattern, or not that we really left it, <laughs> but it's easier to see when you're working one color. So rows 16 through 19, you're going to do the alternating increase row, non-increase row. So this is row 16, this is an increasing row. You want to work two half double crochet in the first and last stitch. And for the next row, you do not increase. Increase for the row after that, do not increase for the row after that. So rows 16 through 19, follow the alternating increase, non-increase row pattern. We're at the end of row 19. You should have 26 stitches all the way across. We're going to change color again. So we're moving from red to black. I guess that's a good thing, right? You want to move from the red to the black? <laughs> Tie a nice night tight knot, flip it over, grab your black yarn, put a slip knot or a slip slip knot on your hook. Join your black color with a slip stitch. This is an increase row. You're going to work two rows of black, so the first row will be an increase row. Chain one to begin. Increase row one and then row two for the black, just a regular row of half double crochet. At the end of row 21, you should have 28 stitches. That's the two rows of black, so you went to 28 stitches in the first row of black. You should still be at 28 stitches in the last row. Snip your yarn, fasten off. We're going back to red now, and the pattern is going to change just a little bit from here on out, but it's not tricky, so bear with me. <laughs> Put a slip knot on your hook. Join your red with a slip stitch. And row 22 is a standard increase row. So once you've joined your red, chain one. Work two half double crochet in the beginning and the end of this row. That'll take your stitch count up to 30. And then all the way from rows 23 to 27, so to the end of our little stuffed cushion here, you're just going to work half double crochet straight across back and forth. So this is the last row of increase. This row will take you to a total of 30 in your stitch count. And then rows 23 to 27, just half double crochet in each stitch across. Remember to chain one and turn at the end of every row. And that will still leave you with 30 stitches once you get to the end of row 27. At the end of row 27, you should have 30 stitches. Just fasten off. And that is the end of row uh, 27 and side one. You can go ahead and make the second side and the only difference here is between the white and where we did the flesh tone, you're not going to change color to flesh tone. So you're just going to work those three rows in white. So you're going to change to white after red and just continue until you have to change back to red. So you don't need um, any more flesh tone, you just work the back of it in white and the rest of it is the same. So you can go ahead and work side two. We're going to go ahead and make his mustache and beard now. So you're going to grab your white yarn and you're going to begin with a slip knot. And you're going to chain 23. Once you have 23 chains, we're going to do some slip stitching. So I want to remind you to try and be loose with your slip stitches because you don't want to tighten up your foundation chain row. So we're going to skip over the first chain, find the second chain, and slip stitch into it. And when I say slip stitch loosely, I mean try to like leave a little bit of slack on your yarn so that when you create that slip stitch, it's not too tight. You're going to slip stitch into each of the next four chains as well. So all together that's five slip stitches. And here comes some mustache shaping. We're going to single crochet into the next stitch. 
half double crochet into the next stitch. Work two double crochet into the next stitch. And when I say stitch, I'm referring to these chains, but as you know, chains are stitches. So that's two double crochet into that same stitch. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. You're getting a real stitch workout here. <laughs> Into the next two stitches, or these two chains, you're going to slip stitch. Remember to try and keep them nice and loose. And now we're going to repeat in reverse. So single crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next, Work two double crochet into the next chain or the next stitch. Half double crochet into the next. Single crochet into the next chain and slip stitch the rest of them all the way to the end. At the end, you can snip your yarn and fasten off. That completes his rather dapper moustache. And this is why I said you wanted to try and keep your slip stitches nice and loose. You want to make sure that this stretches across that line between where flesh and red change colors. So you want to make sure that stretches from one side to the other and when you're sewing it down you can stretch as you go if you have to. But there is his moustache. Now we're going to flip it upside down, grab our white yarn, make a slip knot, and you're going to Count backwards until you get to that first single crochet, or in this case, the last single crochet we made. And underneath that single crochet is where you want to join your yarn with a slip stitch. Chain one, half double crochet into the same stitch that you just joined in. And now you're going to half double crochet in the bottom of each of these chains until you get to the bottom of the single crochet that you worked over here. So the, the first single crochet you worked on the underside or the other side of this row. So work a half double crochet into the bottom of each of these chains. And I'll see you at the end of the row. You should have 12 half double crochets all worked directly underneath your little mustache. Now you're going to chain one, turn your work, and we're going to half double crochet two stitches together to begin our next row. So you wrap, pick up a loop in the first stitch, pick up a loop in the next stitch, and then wrap and pull back through everything. Half double crochet all the way across until you get to your last two stitches. You're going to half double crochet those two together you'll have 10 stitches at the end of this row. Chain one, turn your work. We're gonna turn these 10 stitches into eight. We're going to half double crochet the first two stitches together, half double crochet across to the end, and half double crochet the last two stitches together. So you should have eight stitches at the end of this row. Chain one, flip your work. Half double crochet the first two stitches together. Half double crochet across to the last two and half double crochet the last two stitches together. And you should have six stitches. Chain one, 
turn your work, and we're going to half double crochet all the way across. Um, sorry, half double crochet two together all the way across. So, so we're going to half double crochet the first two stitches together, half double crochet the next two stitches together, and half double crochet the last two stitches together. And that is our beard. Now, before you cast off, or I should say fasten off, make sure that you <laughs> it's going to stretch. You want to eyeball how much yarn you think you're going to need in order to sew all the way around your little mustache and beard. So before you snip your yarn, give yourself sort of an eyeball. I like to um, uh, sort of lay it alongside over the top, a little bit of slack here and there, a little bit of slack, a little bit of slack, all the way back around to the bottom. Give myself an extra couple of inches, and that is the amount of yarn that I snip off. And hopefully that'll be enough to sew down my <laughs> beard. If it's not, you can always tie in a little bit of extra. But if you keep your stitches small, then you shouldn't have a problem. So you can go ahead, grab your yarn needle, you can pin down your beard if you like. You want to make sure that it lines up along, you're covering this color change line here between the flesh and the jacket. You want to line up <laughs> the ends of your mustache and beard. Pin it down if you feel you need to to hold it in place. Grab your yarn needle and just start picking up a little piece of a stitch on the pillow and a little piece of a stitch on the beard. A little piece of a stitch on the pillow, a little piece of a stitch on the beard. Just work a nice simple small whip stitch all the way around and sort of sew down <laughs> your beard and mustache. As you work your way across, um, just keep kind of tugging it into place. Stop every so often. Make sure that it's sitting on your Santa Claus in a nice even fashion. Um, you can weave in your little short tails or just wait until you get to the end and tuck them in or even pull them through to the back. Remember, nothing's going to be seen on the back side of this because it's going to have the other side of the pillow. So just continue working through. You can even go all the way through the fabric if you want, all the way in and then back out and up into the next stitch and back down again. Making sure that you keep your stitches as small as possible, just so that you don't run out of your yarn. And if you do, don't worry, just bring it to the back, tie in another piece, and keep going. Because <laughs> nothing will be seen on the back. Once you've worked your last stitch, just bring your yarn through to the back. And you can tie a knot back here, sort of secure it across the back of some of these stitches. And you can Weave it in or just trim it and let it lie loose because remember this is going to be filled with stuffing. So just create a very simple knot, something that you know it won't, uh, it won't undo on it and uh, be done with it. And there's his beard and his mustache. Now we're going to grab his eyes. Grab your needle and thread and you can grab your two button eyes. You want to position them in a place so cute. Somewhere you like them, maybe close together, maybe on the top of each side of the bump of his moustache. I think perhaps I will do that. And then you can sew them on. So hold one in place and you can anchor your thread again on the back. And I like to double up my thread. And then just work around, I don't want to go that far, there we go, work around one stitch because um, you don't want to pull your pillow out of alignment. So try to sew it down, see I'm, I'm hopping over the post of one stitch here, and then just sew them on back and forth, back and forth. Once that one's down nice and tight, you can run your yarn or your thread, I should say, over here and then sew on button number two, and that way you only have to knot off once. The next little detail we're going to do is just a little bit of a mouth. So you're going to thread up a length of red. You do not need very much. Use your yarn needle, and right here 
right between his moustache and his beard, somewhere where uh, there would be a mouth. You're going to bring your yarn in from the back. Leave yourself a little bit of tail, hard to see there, there is a little bit of tail because you're going to knot those two ends together. Pop over a stitch or two and just embroider yourself about oh, three stitches worth. Don't pull it too tight, you don't want to pull your stitches out of alignment. But maybe two or three back and forths, just so it looks like he's got a little mouth there poking out of his white, white beard. There. Flip it over, grab the two ends, tie a knot, and you can leave these hanging because, like I say, it's going to be full of stuffing. We're going to use the same technique to give him a bit of a belt buckle. So grab a little bit of yellow yarn, thread it up in your yarn needle, pick up Santa, and decide how big a buckle you want. I think I want my buckle to be at least as wide as the bottom of his beard. So again, I'm going to bring my yarn in from behind, and I'm going to make sure I leave a little bit dangling so I can knot my ends together. Then I'm going to track over one, two, three, four, five stitches and go back in. I'm going to do this two or three times. Until I have something that resembles the top of a buckle. There we go. And then I'm going to hop down over the black part, so over his belt, and directly in alignment with where the edge of my top buckle is, and I'm going to do the same thing up and down. So two or three, just so it's about as wide as the top part. And then I'm going to repeat the same process underneath the belt and on the opposite side, and I'll have what looks like a simple little belt buckle. Remember not to pull your stitches too tight because you don't want to stretch um, or pull your stitches on your actual pillow. Flip it over, grab the two yellow ends, knot them together, and that's the belt buckle then. Now we need to sew it and stuff it. So you want to lay both pieces together. Make sure they line up. Um, the nice thing about having done all the color changing is that you have sort of visual ideas of where you need to uh, be at so that your two sides don't kind of end up getting pulled out of alignment. Um, if you want to be picky, go ahead and match the color for sewing. Um, so for example, you can do this, this section in red, switch to black, sew that up, switch to red. Um, in this section, I would just use the white all the way up, and when you're sewing, just pick up sort of the edge piece, and you won't notice the stitches. If you want to sew this inside out, so you put your right sides together, just as though you were sewing some fabric, and do the same thing, match your yarn. You can do that if you feel more comfortable, and then leave the bottom open, flip it inside out, but there's really no right or wrong way to sew this up. So whatever method you're comfortable with, just thread up your yarn and go to town. When you get round to the other side, leave the bottom open. We want to make sure that we can have a nice big space to stuff our Santa with. And this is also a good time to sew on your pom-pom. So if you've got a pom-pom with two long strings like me, and we did a tutorial on how to make this using a clover pom-pom maker. I've got the link in the description box down below. Or if you've got a regular pom-pom, you can grab a needle and thread and just sew it down. Just makes it a little easier because you can get your fingers into the top of the hat and you can grab both of those strings, pull them in on either side of the hat uh, top seam there, and then you can knot them on the inside of the hat and make sure that that stays on nice and tight. Now that he's got his pom-pom on, you can go ahead, grab your stuffing, and start stuffing Santa. And remember, use smaller pieces, especially when you're working near the top, and stuff 
firmly, but don't overstuff it because you don't want to be able to see your stuffing coming through the little stitch uh, spaces. Once you've got them evenly stuffed, and take a moment to sort of squish them, make sure you don't have any sort of stuffing holes, then you can hold the end tightly shut together, grab your yarn needle, thread up the rest of that tail, and sew up your bottom seam. And there you go, one Santa Claus pillow. I hope you had fun making him with me today. And if you did, I'd love to see a picture. You can post pictures to me at Jaden Stitches on Google+, Instagram, and even Pinterest. And that is it for this week, everybody. We will see you again soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. So until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. And remember, someone's watching. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>